Managing Kubernetes and container orchestration at scale can be challenging. Kubernetes adoption itself is complex. It relies on a wealth of knowledge and skills, a ton of open source solutions to get a useful commercial platform up and running. Think ingress controllers, API gateways, schedulers, autoscalers, observability and monitoring solutions, CICD, GitOps, deployment and automation, container image management, security and vulnerability scanning tools, policy, access control, authentication. These are all performed by a crazy amount of tooling developed by different communities using different technologies. You need a lot of experts with a lot of knowledge to bring this all together. And today's video is sponsored by Portainer. Portainer has set me up with a challenge to get an enterprise ready Kubernetes platform with all of the tools needed up and running within 15 minutes and doing all of this using Portainer. Portainer provides a lot of capabilities including a user interface to build your own platform so I want to see how far I can take it. So without further ado, let's go. Portainer can run as a container, which means you can run it absolutely anywhere you like. Wherever you are on your journey, if you're using virtual machines, Docker, Kubernetes, on-prem, or in the cloud, Portainer meets you wherever you are in your journey. A virtual machine with Docker means I can just quickly create my volume, and then followed by a simple Docker run command. And this will quickly get a Portainer up and running in my existing environment. With Portainer, you can choose your cloud or use your existing cloud provider. So we can quickly add environment to our Portainer instance. So wherever we are in our container journey, whether we're starting out with containers, with Docker, or we want to advance into a Kubernetes journey, we can create a Kubernetes cluster using something like Talos Kubernetes by simply filling out the form and following the steps. Or as a company, you might already have an existing cloud provider. So you can use your cloud provider to provision a cluster and simply attach Portainer with ease. Portainer makes it easy to do so by just selecting the Kubernetes option. We can deploy the agent to our Kubernetes cluster, which will connect it up. Or if our clusters are private, we can look at the edge agent options. After deploying the agent, I simply provide a name of my cluster. This is my Kubernetes development environment and the endpoint to connect to. I have my dev environment up and running and the steps are the same to add your production environment. So you can manage multiple Kubernetes environments in one place. Next, for an enterprise cluster, we have to deploy and configure namespaces. You can view namespaces as spaces where we can isolate applications from one another. Think of departments, teams, or projects. We can control where the apps go and who has access to what. So Portainer allows me to view and create namespaces. I want to start with an ingress namespace so I can control where my traffic comes from and how to take care and deal with inbound traffic. Then I'll want another namespace for monitoring and one for all my applications so I can give my dev teams access to the apps namespace in the future and under my apps namespace I can enable things like resource quotas I can set resource limits for memory and CPU and then we have registries registries are very important because it controls where container images are pulled from this is important for security so we tell Portainer what registries our platform trusts now the same applies for helm repositories we can add helm repositories like one for our ingress controller, one for our monitoring, and this allows us to define what Helm repositories our platform is allowed to use. We have a Helm repository for our ingress, metrics, logging and monitoring, and certificate management. Now with the Helm repositories configured, to build a great platform, you need planning. How are you going to manage all incoming traffic? How are you going to monitor the platform as well as the apps that developers deploy? How are you going to allow developers to monitor their apps like logs, metrics, and traces? How are you going to manage and rotate TLS certificates? To do all of this, we need some popular Helm charts and Portainer allows us to deploy and manage Helm charts on our platform. On the Portainer interface, I can head over to applications and I can create new applications from code. I can use the Helm chart section and I'm going to deploy an ingress controller. I do that by giving it a name and selecting the Helm chart repository and the Helm chart I want to deploy. Portainer automatically detects the installation options. I can customize my installation and Portainer also gives me the values file as a reference. I can use this reference to work out what I want to customize for this ingress Helm chart and then I can simply install it. I have my ingress controller deployed and I can repeat this for other popular Helm charts that I might need. Like monitoring, I can deploy 
the Q Prometheus stack. Go ahead and deploy that. I can deploy Grafana Loki for my logs. I'll go with the Loki stack. Go and deploy that. For TLS certificate management, I'll go ahead with Cert Manager. Go ahead and deploy that. Now with open source observability at your disposal, like Grafana and Prometheus, you'll have access to a lot of pre-built dashboards and get deep insights on your cluster's performance as well as the network. For CICD, GitOps and delivery pipelines to work, we want to connect our platform to Git as well as a container registry. On the Portainer interface, we can head over to registries. We can go and add a registry. You can select any registry that your company uses. Go ahead and give it a name. Pop in our credentials and add the registry. To connect things like GitOps, we'll need to add a Git credential. Put in our credentials and go and save it. So now our platform has secure access to Git so we can do things like GitOps and it has secure access to our container registries so we can pull images securely into our platform. When it comes to application management, I was curious to see how Portainer can handle different organization cultures. One type of culture is where you have a platform team set up an entire environment create everything, set it all up, and only allow developers read-only access to the applications they deploy. This culture has a lot of strict boundaries in terms of what developers can do. On the other hand, you have a culture where a platform team sets up a platform and gives development a space where they have ownership and they can deploy their apps. For all of this to work, you need role-based access control. So in Portainer, I have this apps namespace, which will be the boundary of my development teams. Now, in the first type of culture I have a platform team that goes and sets everything up and with Portainer I found this super easy. I just head over to applications, I went create from code, selected git repository, select my apps namespace, I want authentication, I select my git credential and I start adding my git repositories to deploy from and the manifest to deploy. I then turn on GitOps updates. So I tell the platform to pull my git repo every five minutes and I always apply the latest manifest. I I click deploy and that was it. In my app's namespace, I already have my first microservice deployed. I then repeated the step for my other microservices. I very quickly got four microservices deployed using a GitOps pipeline. So you can either have your platform team go set everything up, enable GitOps, or you can give your development team access to the namespace and allow them to be empowered to do so. Now to give other departments and teams access to Portainer, we have the authentication page under settings. And Portainer supports very various authentication settings and should be able to integrate with your existing OAuth implementation. So you can enable single sign-on, you can even automatically provision users, and you can also have teams mapped automatically as well. I go ahead and select Microsoft, fill out my details and save the settings. This means when users come to Portainer now, they'll use your existing company login to access the platform. In this demo, I have the internal auth on as well, but you can turn that off. If I log in, I'll log in with a Microsoft account. So now I'm logged in as a new development user, I cannot see any environments, I have no access. If I log in with my admin account, I can head over to Teams, and with the development team created, we can start adding users to the Teams. So I add the user, and under the Environments page, I can start giving access to different Teams. So this is where I can add Teams to give them access to the environment as different types of users. And here I can provide the team different levels of access. So this is where I could give my Teams read only only access to production and more access in development. But Portainer also allows you to set up granular control. So you can either be strict with read-only access across the whole environment, or you can give development teams access to their specific namespace. So you can empower them to be productive. So as an admin, I can head over to namespaces and then for the apps namespace, I can say manage access and I can grant access to my development teams. As a developer, I can now see two namespaces. I can see the default and the apps namespace. So as a developer, I'm now empowered to deploy my own apps. So now our platform is ready. And as a developer, I can sign in with my Microsoft Intra account and I can access my isolated apps namespace. And I can start by doing Git flow development. So in my development and my production environment, I have four microservices deployed for my website. And as a developer, I want to go ahead 
ahead and update the about me section and modernize it a little bit so as a developer i'm making a simple code change by replacing the initial about me section with a new more modernized version i then follow a git flow so i go git status git add git commit and i push this to a development branch this allows you to follow a standard git flow practice creating a pull request doing code reviews and then merging that into the desired branch this also means that as a developer i can edit my application and under the git ops section i can also change the branch to use a feature branch or another branch specifically for my development environment this means that i can have a github action or a ci pipeline that builds on that feature branch and it'll go ahead and build and push my docker image so every time a developer pushes to the feature branch it goes to the dev environment and when they merge a pull request after code review into the main branch it goes into the production environment so i can have my clusters look at different branches this depends on the company culture if you're following trunk based development you can have your dev environment and your prod environment look at the same main branch and after pushing to the development environment you can see my changes have automatically reflected in the dev environment so i've got my about me section over here and after testing things in the develop environment i can open a pull request to the master branch that's a pull request to update the about me section i can go and view the file changes the changes can then be reviewed and approved and then i can go ahead and merge it and after a few minutes i can check my content service has started rolling out in my production cluster and on my production site you can see i have my production domain right here and the new about me section has been deployed now to do a rollback it's as simple as doing a pull request revert in git portainer will automatically roll that change back so within portainer as a developer i can access my application logs i can go ahead and search the logs and i can download them and that's great for developers to control and manage and monitor their applications from a single platform now that we've given developers access to be productive on the platform we can go ahead and secure the platform further now under the cluster setup section portainer has a lot of features we can disable the allow users to use external load balancers this will force all our traffic to come through the ingress controller and prevent developers from spinning up load balancers saving us cost and a lot more settings like governing ingresses change window settings we can restrict access to the default namespace restrict secret contents with the key feature is the security constraints section here we can enable pod security constraints and we can start looking at restricting privilege containers restricting host namespace and these are all policy settings that we can govern this allows us to improve the security further on the platform and under the settings general page we can also enforce code based deployment if i turn that on this will prevent developers from making changes in the ui and will be forced to go through the git flow and GitOps workflow so as you can see portana gives us a lot of granular control through policies and different settings to lock down various aspects of our cluster all from a central place we don't need to deploy a bunch of open source tools to do policy management and improve certain security aspects they're simply just toggles that we can switch on and we're done whilst playing with portainer one thing i noticed under the settings section is there is a new section called observability and this is an experimental feature i went ahead and i turned this on note that this is an experimental feature at this time so it's not ready for production use at the time of this recording i go ahead and save this turn it on and this gives me a new alerting feature over here under the alerting section there's active alerts silent alerts rules and settings and there's a bunch of alert rules that we can go ahead and turn on things like when backups fail brute force attacks environments down high cpu high memory high network usage high authentication failures and tls certificates expired we can go ahead and turn some of these on the alert settings also allow us to configure notification channels so we can add channels like slack webhooks email and microsoft teams so think of this as an alert manager within portainer the same thing goes for the policy section you'll be able to control policies control applications developer being able to look into logs being able to deploy helm charts and now being able to set up alerts all of this within a single platform without having to deploy a bunch more open source tooling this is what i like to see 
Now after going in and enabling the alert system and temporarily turning off my Kubernetes API server, you can see my active alert has now fired. So I have the environment down alert, which is now active and critical. I can then choose to silence the alert. And here we can put a start and end date, which allows us to temporarily silence the alert while we fix the issue. Now that's pretty impressive that a UI based app can give you so much control and capabilities and all the advanced dials and terminal stuff is still there. So Portainer took nothing away. It provided me with a totally different experience and a different perspective. And I think there's a lot of value in that for companies and teams who may not be heavy advanced terminal users, who are still very early adopters of containers and Kubernetes, you're able to go from zero to enterprise ready, which is powerful. And you can see how this tool can help you throughout a container journey. If you're brand new with virtual machines and you want to move into Docker, Docker Swarm, and then gradually start going into to Kubernetes to an orchestrator. That's a lot of power and capability right there. Hopefully you liked the video and let me know down below your journey on how you have moved through your container journey into orchestration. And as always, like, subscribe, hit the bell. And if you want to support the channel even further, hit the join button down below to become a YouTube member. And as always, thanks for watching and until next time, peace.